Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories and today's topic is. Serious how have your parents unintentionally fucked you up? Ma was very occupied with making sure we were independent when we grew up. She kept a ledger where things like chicken McNuggets on Tuesday or new shoes were recorded and used as debt slash leverage. And I mean, it worked. I left the house at 19 on my own, and my sister hasn't spent more than 6 months living there since she was 18. It's been over a dozen years and I am very proud that I have never needed to ask her for a single thing. Lately she has been getting upset that we aren't as close, or hallmark, of a family unit as some of my cousins. She doesn't seem to realize she didn't raise a family like that. We're all just too, independent. My mom is the complete opposite. She's a helicopter parent. I have trouble being in social situations because she would do everything for me. It's like a little part of me is stunted as an adult. I'm 32, engaged, and she still wishes I was home. Not in the normal I miss my kid way, but she wouldn't mind if I quit my job, dumbed my fiancé, and lived with her forever. She grew up with a mom like yours, and then just went the complete opposite with me. The two extremes are interesting. I hope to find a healthy middle with my own children. When I was little my mother would assume I was lying unless I told her exactly what she wanted to hear. She used to yell at me how I could not be trusted because I was a liar. Funny thing is, I have always been a candid person and notoriously bad liar, but my mother seemed to think otherwise. Once I experimented with cutting my hair. I made a mess, obviously, but I cut only the inner layers and my mother took a while to notice. When she did she asked me what had happened and I told her the truth. She did not believe me and pushed and gaslighted me until I confessed that a classmate she hated had done it to me. I was doubtful of what had happened for years to come. My parents would quickly show me how to do something once without stopping to explain anything and expect me to absorb that and do it perfectly the first time. When I inevitably didn't they would tell me that I was useless, and take over. When I was a kid they would often beat me before taking over. I get stressed if I don't know how to do something immediately now because I expect to be punished for it. Burden of expectation, I was a gifted child and when I turned out to be exceptionally above average at baseball all they saw were money signs and that became my life. Would call me lazy if I played video games because I could be practicing etc. A game I loved to play for fun turned into a job and I was 12-14. I did make it to the D1 level but at the cost of my childhood and mental health. Also tore my rotator cuff so no longer playing, tongue sticking out. When I was 10, my little league had a long toss and home run derby challenge and I was able to throw the hardest and hit the hardest out of anyone there 12 and under. That began my pitching career, at 10 baseball became a year-round thing taking up 90% of my time throughout the year. I had travel ball teams contacting my father, who was vicariously living his dead baseball dream through me, and he would eat it up and make me play with all these teams every weekend. Pitching was a joke as a kid, I threw so hard the kids would flinch when the ball hit the glove. LOL, that's my mill. When she started telling me the intimate details of the issues in my B.I.L. and Sills marriage, which I'm assuming B.I.L. told her in confidence, I quickly realized that she'd share the same stuff about me and my husband. Needless to say, she's now on an information diet for the rest of her days. As far as she's concerned, it's all puppies and roses for us. When I was 11, I had a crazy nightmare one night and ended up wetting the bed. My mom, who is a great mom, completely lost her shit and tore into me, yelling that I was too old to be wetting the bed and on and on. Since then I've been so worried I might wet the bed I have to check to make sure I don't have to pee over and over again at night. This is usually me getting up out of the bed to go stand over the toilet to drip two drops of pee then go back to bed. If I do anything between peeing and getting in bed, I have to check again. I'm 47. It's ridiculous. My brother and I had a sleepover with our cousins when we were younger and I was going to use the bathroom before going to bed, 
I can't remember exactly what was said, but my brother stopped me from using the bathroom, I think he needed to go number two and I might not have wanted to wait. I ended up wetting the bed that I was sharing with my younger cousin. She was so upset with me, I was so embarrassed and now to this day I need to go pee right before going to bed or I physically cannot fall asleep from the fear of having an accident. We laugh about it all the time 20 plus years later but it had a lasting impact on me. They made me think I was more intelligent than I actually was. I got good grades in the first three years of high school, then they forced me to take AP classes. Went from honor roll student to D's and C's. Then they basically forced me to go to college or I had to move out. Majored in computer science because I had to pick a real area of study. Took calculus and programming classes for the first time in my life, and flunked out of college the first year. Got stuck with a bunch of debt. My mother had a psychotic break when I was nine. She spent most of my youth in and out of psychiatric institutions, and if she was home, she was basically a zombie. I grew up without really any guidance and basically hated my life. I had this happy fun persona at school and was popular and well liked, but I absolutely hated my home life. I'd walk home and just feel so angry and shitty. The house was always a mess, my mom is basically not there, my stepdad made sure he worked super late, and there was just no adult guidance. Not to mention the harrowing hysterics I witnessed my mother go through before being medicated, walking in her room and seeing knives and razors, her arms cut up all the way. Her telling me how much she wants to kill herself, that SHT really fucked up my mind as a child. I didn't even begin to think about that stuff until I was like 19, and basically blocked it out of my mind for over a decade. I'm 31 meow and my mother is doing much better and we make sure she lives comfortably. I'm much better too and have learned not to let those terrible memories define who I am. Honestly. I got this diary and openly wrote in it, assuming, naively, that no one would dare read it. Diaries were private so my mother would respect it right? The next day she said that my grammar needed improving. Her opinion was that a child should not have privacy. Well that ended up with my sibling and I learning to keep secrets, carefully filtering out what we said, and talking about meaningless shit but keeping the important stuff hidden. Every day is kid's day. Being a kid fucking sucked. Confused as hell, school system is just broken and stupid, being forced to do things that don't want to do which makes you dislike them even more. Waking up early and sleep deprived in a critical period of development when it's still dark outside to go to a building with super bright fluorescent lighting that shows every pimple and imperfection on your face. Forced to sit still in a chair all day, destroying your spine, otherwise being forced to take drugs to keep you still. Kids are being fucked up in some way in just about every moment of their lives. It's fucked. They were completely unimpressed with everything I did. Straight A's. Met. Gifted program. Met. Win school spelling bee. Met. Win Bible competitions at church. Met. High school valedictorian. Met. Get into college. Met. Graduate college. Met. Everything I ever did got nothing. Meanwhile, my sister got praise for everything. Straight A's and everyone in the world was told how amazing she was. Same for any academic prizes she won. Same for any athletic prizes, my sister is stupidly athletic while I am definitely not. Even when people would praise me to my parents for something I did my parents would say something like, that's great but you should see what his sister did. The end result is that I am now an adult who has no ability to be impressed with anything I do. It's just meh for everything. It would be nice to enjoy my accomplishments for once even though they're not much. My parents were basically good parents and far better than my rotten teenage ass deserved at times, but they had their own generational trauma and some of it came down to me. My father grew up in a drunken, abusive home. He never raised a hand to me or had more than a couple of beers, but the PTSD came down to me in severe anger issues. The thing is, 
you are responsible for your own actions. Recognize the bad parts your parents passed down and reject them in yourself. You don't have to be perfect. Just do better than they did. Mom was distant, cold, never affectionate. Once, when I was a teen, I tried to hug her and she yelled at me. She was super nice to my friends. She treated them like actual people with opinions that mattered. She treated me like a silly kid who didn't know anything. Many, many times she told me she never wanted a daughter, she only wanted sons. And she liked to tell me how unlikable she found me. Dad was extremely sexist, emotionally abusive, and sometimes physically abusive. He once choked me until I passed out. I disagreed with him, or maybe sighed at him or something. I wasn't ever allowed to cry for any reason without being shamed, for it. I would get in trouble for things I didn't do. I was never allowed to stick up for myself. And he also wouldn't let me have opinions about anything. I loved my friend's parents because they talked to me like a person and were interested in things I had to say. As an adult I've been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, an OCD. I'm estranged from both of my parents and so is my brother. Even though he was their golden child, he also faced abuses. We both tried as adults, always hoping things would get better. But seeing their cruelty extend to our own kids, and our spouses, we noped out. There's a lot, but there's a few key things I've come to realize fucked me up. They forced religion onto me and ostracized my friends that were not religious. Once I stopped being religious my mom literally cried. Also forced their political, republican, views onto me and when I become democratic they thought that meant I was now dumber than before. Compared me to everyone including my sister, cousins, and just smart kids in school. Didn't care about my mental health and used therapy as a weapon. They'd tell me to behave or else I was going to have to go to therapy because they knew people in school made fun of kids who went to therapy. Didn't allow me to access to money or bad foods growing up. Once I got an ounce of freedom I gained an addiction to junk food, specifically soda, and spending. My mother in particular always talked shit about my dad's family to my sister and I. It really didn't set a good example for a healthy relationship and made it hard to respect her. Taught me that there was only one correct way to be, skinny, pretty without having to work on myself, long hair, perfect grades, athletic and in shape without having to work out, and a pushover. Last but not least, my mom also talked shit about my friends to me. It wasn't like I was mad at someone and said something, she would just tell me which of my friends she did and didn't like and why. She'd say why they were bad people in her eyes. Also, if I had any guy friends she did like, she'd ask me why I wasn't with them instead of my boyfriend, who I dated through all of high school, college, and am still dating. She didn't respect my relationship, and this is how she showed it. Good luck. It can be hard to uncondition yourself. I had a friend with similar anxieties. She decided on a casual face to wear transition out of wearing a fuller look. Something that would take two minutes to go get gas slash groceries slash etc. She bought a BB cream slash tinted moisturizer and then basically did that, a brow pencil and lip gloss. For her it helped to have a set casual routine to differentiate between her normal work look. It was still nerve-wracking for her of course but she became comfortable wearing very little and it helped her transition to going bare-faced on errands. Just some food for thought. I fell in love with my female best friend. I remember one time I woke up next to her and she said, Good morning best friend, I love you to me with no makeup and bed head. She looked much better than when she was dolled up. Do you know what the word, quotidian means? You should be comfortable being quotidian. No one will think anything is wrong with you if they see you without makeup. This is going to be a long one. My dad and mother literally built up my anxiety, my low self-esteem and my insecurities. I am terrified to actually make any mistakes since whenever I did they grounded me for months or screamed at me. I can't accept that I have my own worth, 
cause dear old dad actually does everything in his power to minimize everything I do as he built himself up. My mother has gaslighted my ass for the last five years, saying that the year I had a really deep depression, auto-mutilation problems, a memory gap of three months, it was all my fault for acting out. Well I kinda blame mine, I mean she was part of it, she could have stood up for me, telling my father that maybe three months without being at least able to watch TV was a tad much, but no she actually agreed I deserved it. Whenever I try to bring it up she just tells me that he loves me and I wasn't the easiest person to deal with. I remember my previous therapist telling me that if I wasn't a good son that they weren't really good parents, this stuck with me. What kinda makes me worse is the fact that besides everything I do love them, it would much easier if I hated them. I would literally love my parents without the abuse and gaslighting and it hurts me knowing that it's impossible to separate their abusive traits from their personalities. Anyway hope you don't really need to see your father someday, sometimes cutting people off, even family, is the best thing you can do. Overprotective, overbearing mother who never let me learn to be independent when I was young. I had my rebellious phrase at 18, and matured much slower compared to my peers. I also struggled with adulting things like making good decisions. Generally I felt like in my 20s, I had to learn and teach myself how to adult because when I was young, my mother would enforce her decisions on me, not let me make independent decisions, or teach me basic things like social skills. She was lonely and had no much friends slash family so I was like her pet that she kept by her side. And also from both of my parents strained relationship. However now that I'm a grown adult, though I struggle from some emotional issues, I'm still generally a normal functioning adult like with proper job etc. I've learned to let it go and take the responsibility to fix whatever trauma I had went through. I was a gifted student growing up and always tested in the 99% of my peers in my city's standardized testing. My older brother, on the other hand, struggled in school. In a real squeaky wheel gets the grease move they spent time and effort in improving his academics while leaving me to blow off homework and explore the wonderful world of procrastination. They really meant well and I've never been without my needs met but I sometimes think about how my life would have turned out if my folks were more attentive with my work habits and academics from a young age. My mother lied to me for 15 years saying my father left me because he didn't want to live in America with us. This obviously led to a deep-seated resentment of my father and abandonment issues, now where the lie comes in. My mother was married to a different guy and cheated on him which conceived me, after I was born my mother was so guilty she fled Canada with me even though her husband forgave her and desperately wanted to raise me as his own. So now I still hate my dad because he treats me like I'm dead, and can't trust my mother because she uses me as a scapegoat for her own infidelity ripping me away from the one father figure I could have had. Now I can't trust. My parents drilled into my head that fighting was never an option. Never even told me it was okay to defend myself. That I should be like Jesus and turn the other cheek. So when I started getting bullied and teased in school I told them and they said they would handle it for me and so they went and talked to the principal at school and some kids got in trouble but my life didn't get better. I was the most pathetic pussy of a kid who didn't even know how to defend himself verbally, much less physically. I just cried a lot, which also didn't help my reputation. Yeah, can't cook either. They did let me help cooking. But it's not exactly learning to cook if they tell you what to do, but not why. I mean I had to figure out myself why you put oil in the water when cooking pasta. It's so the pasta don't stick together. Nobody told me so I was feeling like an idiot when I poured oil in the water when I was about to cook some potatoes. Can't wash clothes either, same reason. They explained to me what setting to use, but got mad when I asked why because I should know. Now I don't wash clothes myself because I don't know what setting to use for what type of clothing. Privacy, communication, and honesty. Privacy, my parents used to track me in high school via my phone, take my phone at random times and make me unlock it and go through all my texts and punish for cursing or stupid things like that. 
They've torn my room apart multiple times under suspicion of drug use, which eventually turned out to be true, but it was only weed, and I hadn't done any drugs in my life for the first like 10 times they did it. And they'd take away my video game slash other prized possessions in high school under suspicion of me doing something wrong. My mom took away my GameCube and fucking lost it BC she forgot where she hid it and it had a 10 plus year game of Animal Crossing on the memory card and smash in the disc drive because she heard one of my friends smoked weed. So I basically woke up at 15 to my room being raided, I was forced to read every text out loud from my phone which was humiliating as fuck, and they took all my shit for nothing. All I got was a well we didn't know, sorry as an apology. I demanded the GameCube back because I was afraid she'd lose it, had happened before with less valuable video games, and was punished for being disrespectful by her holding onto it. She of course lost it, and then took my phone away when I got upset and went on a rant about how I told her this would happen and it's all over something I didn't do. Oh, also, my house had a full security camera system, inside and out, like legit dome style security cams built into the wall slash ceilings, not the stuff you buy on Amazon, which he watches and reviews on his phone nightly. He has gone as far as logging my comings and goings and basically trying to confront me all smugly about my sleep schedule with this gotcha look on his face. He basically gets off on minding other people's business and shaming them for it. So now I don't really tell them anything. Communication. I never really wanted to talk to anyone after school because I'd be coming down from the massive dose of ADHD medicine I've been on since I was 6 years old. No matter what, my mom would force me to tell her 5 good things about my day. She'd do it in the car if she was giving me a ride home, or she'd come and find me in the middle of homework slash video games and demand I pause to talk to her. I get that that's a good thing to do to create a positive attitude in your kid or whatever, but she took it to a new level. If I wasn't putting effort in naming the five things I would be punished. This went on from age 6 to like 14. I feel bad about it sometimes but now it's like hardwired into my brain to avoid small talk with her at all costs. I spent my entire childhood basically being verbally held hostage by her so now I just don't really talk to her at all. Honesty. My parents would readily lie slash manipulate if they thought it meant the best for me. They would also scream at me over insanely small things. Like some of the most hurtful things I've ever been told in my life were said by my dad when I was 22 and about to move out, standing over me, screaming at me, red-faced, neck-veined, about how I was a fuck-up and an idiot and going to fuck up at my new job. It was because I didn't set up the water slash internet for my new apartment I was moving into in two weeks, first apartment, I just didn't know. Not even his problem, I was paying for it. Obviously there have been like 100 plus incidents like that, that one was just the first that came to mind. During my elementary years, I really wanted to be in the NBA. It was a huge dream of mine. My parents one day sat me down and discussed that I won't be tall and athletic enough and won't meet necessary requirements to actually make it. I tried to retort but they wouldn't budge at all. Ever since that talk, I've always had confidence issues. So yeah. Thanks, mom and dad. I think sometimes you have to hit people with a reality check before they waste their lives. I know a kid who wanted to be a professional wrestler and was convinced that he would be the greatest of all time. Problem is he wasn't terribly athletic and both of his parents were not big people. Nearly all wrestlers that you've heard of are around 6 feet tall. Rey Mysterio is a notable exception to this, he was never going to get close to that. He had a very scrawny build as did his parents. Guy didn't have the look or athletic ability. He got angry when people told him he was never going to be a pro wrestler, much less the greatest of all time and continued to complain that people were crushing his dreams when the reality is they were trying to keep him from wasting his life and getting injured in the process. I was never allowed to go to a football game, party, etc. I had only one friend in elementary school that I was allowed to hang out with because her parents were well respected in the town. Moved away and the same thing happened in middle school. 
moved away again and by my sophomore year of high school I refused to even talk to my mother about my friends, I don't talk to any of them today, most likely because of this issue. Today I work so much just so I can be around my co-workers and convince myself that they might be my friends. Unfortunately I still live with her and have only gone out with my co-workers once, after which I was yelled at and called irresponsible simply because I was out late and spent money, less than $20. They took their heat out for each other on me. The constant guilt tripping, the comparisons, making me feel ashamed to be related to either of them. I'm still battling those insecurities today. And is why I've decided to foster and adopt children instead of having my own because I don't want to pass on those so-called horrible genetics and habits that my parents passed on to me. My mom would date a lot of guys. I met a few of them when I was really young, and they would always try to treat me like a son. Mom usually broke up with them, saying she wasn't looking for a father for her son, but I only found that out last year. Now, I have a hard time opening up to people in fear of them leaving me without saying a word. Couple that with the fact my father would promise to show up for his visitations and only show up twice, you have the recipe for the ultimate antisocial. They are generally nice people, but we are not a match. I am not too nice, meaning I don't beat around the bush and the only one who will talk about the elephant in the room. My friends appreciated that about me but I am the black sheep in my family. When I was 16, I was told that I am too rough for a girl and if I don't soften up I will be shunned by people, nobody will love me, and I will end up throwing myself under the bus one day. That was really hurtful, I started to feel something is wrong in me. I feel uneasy when someone is friendly to me, or when they compliment my looks. I feel I will look silly if I wear makeup or dress up and people will stare at me since I am not soft enough. I am in my 30s now, I want to dress up and look nice, but a bug in my brain is just not letting me. Mom was a single parent. Not by choice, dad's just a deadbeat. Never paid for child support and hasn't worked since 2008. He's taken care of me maybe a dozen times in the past 13 years. She obviously didn't think she was gonna be a single parent but she didn't realize how single she would be too. Only one of her siblings lives in town and she had her own two buckwild kids to deal with. My granny also lived in town but she died suddenly when I was nine. Mom doesn't have any friends. She doesn't like her co-workers much. Neighbors have always been a neutral relationship. She's created a concrete codependent relationship because she has no one else and doesn't want me to leave because I can do physical shit around the house for her. I'm also the only person she talks to. I've been wanting to move out for years. She has money set aside to help me do so, fuck rent prices are n, but she won't give it to me because she's realized how fucked she is without me. And I'm fucked without her approval for anything. When I lived with my mom, her biggest priorities were making sure that I was fed, and that I knew I was loved. I've never had the feeling that my mom didn't love me. However, she had a lot of trauma to work through and wasn't really capable of caring for kids in the way we needed, so my brother and I ended up mostly being raised by our dad. Dad, on the other hand, was emotionally withholding. He married my stepmom, who was the same way. They put a lot of pressure on me to do well in school, help raise my brother and step-siblings, and adhere to a lot of rules that none of the other kids had to worry about. I felt very trapped at home. I didn't feel that there was anyone there who loved or appreciated me. I would always count the days until a visit with my mom. Spending weekends at her house was like finding sanctuary. I was loved. I was accepted. I didn't have this huge weight on my shoulders. But she didn't always show up when she said she would, so I learned that I couldn't depend on her. Once I grew up, I think I spent way too much of my adult life pursuing relationships. I wanted the love and safety that I felt at my mom's house as a kid, but a more stable and permanent version. I wanted to be able to come home to person and a place where I felt loved, safe and appreciated. None of the people I dated were really down for that, though, 
so I became a bit of a serial monogamist. It's only now that I'm married and in my 30s that I'm realizing I should have spent more of that time learning how to love myself and be my own sanctuary. My mother was always very worried about me burning out so whenever I had to work even a little bit harder than usual she would be so concerned and tell me to relax and slow down. I know she did this out of love for me but now I feel like I'm almost scared of working too hard because I think I'm going to burn out immediately. Of course, self-care is important but sometimes in life it's also necessary to hustle a little. My brother and I were given a lot of leeway and freedom to make our own mistakes. All well and good for a lot of things like building life skills, but when it came to relationships, I know I ended up making some of my dad's mistakes again. He was in his 50s as I was starting to date, so I would definitely have benefited from an adult telling me mistakes that he had made so that teenaged me could have avoided them. Because I had a small extended family and my mom's side lived on the other side of the country, I grew up with a view that family gets together every once in a while for special occasions and not much else. To elaborate, I haven't seen my sister in almost a year. She lives 30 minutes away from me. I don't see her because I don't think about her because family was a thing I only saw every once in a while. I had my mom and dad and the closest family other than that was my grandpa who was three hours away. So I kinda have a out of sight, out of mind thing with family. I don't mean to, but I just don't view family the same as others, I guess. They raised me as a Jehovah's Witness. They thought it would protect me from the corrupt morals of the world, and yes, it did keep me out of some trouble but I also developed no social skills as I wasn't allowed to hang out with many worldly kids. It also gave me nightmares about billions of non-JWs dying at Armageddon because they wouldn't convert to our odd and extremely controlling religion. My parents were good people but they probably could have been better if they hadn't gotten roped into a cult. I still love them, but dread the day they disown me when I formally leave the religion. They invested 100% of their time into my younger brother. It was worth it I guess, he's got a full ride at a D1 school next year for football. Super proud of him still, from a young age, he had great potential in sports. The right genetic makeup, he's current 6'6 at 17 and still growing, super lanky but build. I was shoved to the back burner once he started playing any sport. They didn't come to any of my shit if he had something going on, practice even, they missed all of my achievements. Honor roll dinner, swimming state, soccer games etc for the bigger stuff, graduation. Late so they couldn't get in due to being at his practice, wedding. Rugby game ran over so they got there just in the nick of time. When I give birth in February, right around wrestling state, definitely won't be there. When my best friend died in high school, unexpectedly, they need to stay at his football tournament because he needed support from the sidelines. I still love them and have accepted them but it hurts. I'm in therapy still to cope with it. I'm going to try my hardest to make sure my kids feel equally loved. I spent up until I found out trying to discover the quickest, most painless foolproof way to kill myself. The only thing that saved me was a single question what if I fail at this too, since I'm such a failure to begin with. I'm talking obsession as far back as I can recall. By not telling me, denying me coping mechanisms, and all the berating, they nicknamed me Ricky Ricardo with the last word changed to the slur, when I couldn't acquire any common sense on my own, they literally robbed me of the first portion of my life. If your cousin ever expressed frustration to me, I'd just simply tell her I spent a good portion of my life wondering the same thing and about how I found out, and silently encourage her to go for an adult diagnosis plant the seed in her brain, if you will. I think it would be the very least I could do. When I was two years old my parents split up because things were not going well. About a month later my mom moved in with this man that I have never seen before. The man was always kind and 12 years later we are still a family. My stepdad constantly degrades my mom he hits her he calls her out her name he expects HR to do everything. He makes her pay most of the bill but he acts like he spends the most money. 
Because of this my mom took out her anger out on us kids. She would yell at us if everything wasn't perfectly clean and then would yell at us if we did not know how to do our work right. And worst of all she would take her boyfriend's side over her kids. Always telling me that I'm short and people can easily beat me up if needed. I'm 5 feet 4 inches now whenever I see someone taller than me I immediately hate the person for being taller, curse myself for being short and think of what I would do to win a fight with the person if it came to blows. And I suck at making friends due to underconfidence. Making me believe I was perfectly normal, and then finally getting a diagnosis of paranoia, OCD, and anxiety at 19 YRS old, I live in a relatively redneck fishing town so mental illness isn't something that's taken seriously, but once we knew what it was my parents were helpful in me getting help. They moved to the Caribbean when I was in my last year in high school, two months before I my final exams. I had to go and live with my girlfriend, her alcoholic mother and stepdad. I then failed all of my final exams, though still had the grades to enter university from the previous year. At uni, age 17, I drank myself stupid and dropped out after 18 months, then spent three months sleeping on sofas after I was evicted. I could not cope with the depression and abandonment they literally just fucked off. It's taken me years to come to terms with. I could go on, but it was a long time ago. No. It was intentional. Greatest generation HS dropout father who thought closed fist punches were appropriate for me starting at 7 years old. Also belt whipping to the point I was unable to walk. All those dad things many people remember fondly. Having a catch. Going for ice cream. Just taking a walk. Attending one of your things, e.g. game, concert, etc. None of that. He sat on the couch constantly smoking. That's it. When was 18, I was out of the house. You're on your own now, kid. Fine I thought. My mom is a submissive person so I grew up never saying no to things, and my dad wasn't a good person then so he taught me saying no is a bad thing, so now, I'm 17 and rarely ever say no because it feels like I'm committing some kind of felony saying no to things. I'm slowly getting out of it but my boyfriend gets angry at me whenever I don't say no or saying sorry when I do, and that just makes me feel even worse about it. My mom was well aware of my mental health problems starting in middle school and did absolutely nothing about it. I literally sobbed to her about how much I hated school, how I would stay up night after night puking from stress and anxiety. She never helped me at all, never took my cries for help seriously. The best she did was console me that she was anxious in school too and now she's fine, so I would be fine too. She would literally make jokes with me about how she hoped I didn't puke from whatever situation we were in at the time. In front of other people. Other than this I think she was a great mom, it just drives me absolutely fucking insane every time I think about how she completely ignored this aspect of me. I being doing a lot of self-reflection lately and think I might be autistic, but hell if I'm gonna tell her that. Trust issues, I was always a little withdrawn as a teenager. My older brother was the valedictorian, three-sport athlete heartthrob. And I was the chubbier, nerdy brother who had a close-knit group of friends. All of this led to me being a little more show growing up. I remember having a one-on-one -on -one chat with my dad and I opened up about who I had a crush on. It felt good to open up to my dad about it. About an hour later I'm walking by my parents' room and I overhear my dad telling my mom exactly what I told him about my crush. Looking back, I should have expected that he would tell his own wife. But in the moment it felt like such a betrayal of trust, especially when I really struggled to even bring it up. Thankfully as I got to late high school slash college I started to grow out of my shell and started getting better at opening up. Also started running so I wasn't as chubby. They were never around because they were always working long ass days, my work ethic is too good, I work 6 days a week at times and I do 11 to 13 hour days most days and I overwork myself and burn myself out but I can't stop myself from feeling like I should always be taking as much work as I can, 
I don't have a life or friends because all I do is work work work, I'm wasting the best years of my life working away. Candy and sweets in general are punishment. When you're hypoglycemic and are starting to go into hypoglycemic shock, you need sugar so I got force fed candy and slash or fruit drinks whenever I started to get grumpy, irritable, or for the layperson, hangry. Now I generally hate sweets, so no cake, pie, most fruits, and candy for me. I genuinely believe my parents did their best and what they believed was in my best interest, that being said I sort of got emotionally neglected. My dad worked a lot, my mom was just sort of emotionally reserved. In elementary school I had issues with affect regulation and always seemed eager to please people, peers more than authority figures slash adults. As a full-on adult I finally went to a shrink because basically I was depressed and hated myself. After some time I stumbled onto the idea of attachment disorders, insecure attachments. Basically because I never felt a secure attachment with really either of my parents I sought that out in others, validation etc. Played out in all my relationships romantic or otherwise. Recognizing it was an epiphany and I've tried to right the ship in myself and my kids, sounds dumb but I literally try to tell them I love them as much as I can, a level of vulnerability I wouldn't have years ago for both myself and so that they have a secure attachment with me. This marks the end of the video. If you liked my contact, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot, see you until next time.